<laughs> USA Today, great article. Glenn Harlan Reynolds. Americans might look back on the last 50 years and say, what have experts done for us lately? Great headline. Love it. Let's continue on, see what we got to say here. What they got to say. According to Foreign Affairs magazine, Americans reject the advice of experts so as to insulate their fragile egos from ever being told they're wrong. That's in support of a book by Tom Nichols called The Death of Expertise, which essentially advances that thesis. Well, it's certainly true that the experts, in quotations, don't have the kind of authority that they possessed in the decades or two following World War II. Back then, the experts had given us vaccines, antibiotics, jet airplanes, nuclear power, and space flight. The ideas that they might really know best seem pretty plausible. But it also seems pretty plausible that Americans might look back on the last 50 years and say, what have experts done for us lately? Not only have the experts failed to deliver on the moon bases, and flying cars they promised back in the day, but their track record in general is looking a lot spottier than it was in 65. Well, look in the modern day. I mean, every one of them has been proven, whether it's like economic predictions, political predictions, like, they're, I mean, how many times have they been proven? Oil speculators, right? Market speculators, housing market spec. How many times have these fuckers been proven to be wrong? I mean, how many times you got to keep proving that you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong before you stop pretending that these people are actual experts? That whole term, that one word alone is completely null and void when you talk about the reality, right? I mean, if I lost more races than I won, could I be considered an expert in racing? You know, I might understand the underlying fundamentals and aspects and might be able to point out to you how it all plays out. You know, even if your quarter mile race, let's say, well, I can tell you it's 1,320 feet for a quarter mile, and I can give you all these detailed data points, right? But if I don't know how to actually win a race, what am I really an expert in? Number crunching? Well, that don't really fucking mean nothing as far as actually how you get from here to there, does it? Right? And I think basically that's what we're really talking about in this conversation, is what are considered experts today. And if you listen to the kind of people they bring on to news media outlets, like the pundits and the experts they talk about, they all come from predominantly academia, or they're like the Keynesian economists, which are government fucks, right? They're not bringing, you'll never, what you lack, what you never see from anyone on the main stage, as far as when you talk mainstream media or, or politics, is. You never hear people that represent the voice of just like free market, Austrian economists, people that actually, trust me, they do know. And if you look at those people and you correlate their knowledge with their own personal you know, wealth or happiness, well, those people seem to know exactly what they're doing and they have the proof to back up their claims. Whereas the, the academics, like those from academia, those experts, what do they got? They're slaves to a ruler. They, they're, they're, they're conformists. They, they just learn to regurgitate and repeat what they've been taught by their political masters. So what, where's the expertise in that? That's like suggesting that, that a chimpanzee that learns something that a human being has taught them that now become the expert? No, no, I would not look to the chimpanzee over the human being that taught them, right? Um, let me continue on here a little bit. It was the experts characterized in terms of their self-image by David Halberstam of the best and the brightest who brought us the twin debacles of the Vietnam War, which we lost, and the war on poverty, where we spent trillions and certainly didn't win, of course. <laughs> poverty is more rampant now than it was when they started the whole war. Hey, another one I'll add into it before I continue on, the war on drugs, right? Trillions of dollars once again spent, or the war on terrorism. More trillions spent. And has it won? No, you can't win. It's wrong ideas, right? If you use force and mysticism as a means to an end, it's a failure in all aspects. Um, in both cases, confident assertions by highly credentialed authorities founded upon reality at a dramatic cost in blood and treasure. Mostly other people's blood and treasure that's nothing these experts that you look to right these central planners aren't the one that are putting any blood or treasure in the game they're using your you know your offspring or your yourself they're using the blood and treasure of people that are just following line to the narrative that they put forth so yeah come on if they're one willing to put their own skin in the game that's that to me 
is really what it comes down to is lead by example right there's a distinguishable difference between and i've said this past actually I said this in a comment to another gentleman <laughs> earlier today on my uh canadian libertarian facebook pages there's there's a difference between there's a distinguishable difference between a leader and a ruler. A leader leads by example. That's how people learn to how to do things. They lead by example. A ruler is just you do this, right? <laughs> of course you shouldn't follow rulers. You should always well you don't shouldn't always, but if you recognize a leader, that's someone that you should respect and admire because they're leading. They're they're create they're clear on the path. A ruler is sitting at the back, way back there and telling you to go do all the fucking bullshit, all the hard work, put on all the effort, you know, suffer the pain, the devastation, the destruction, the financial hardships. That's not leadership. Like I say, that's dictatorship. That's rule by edict, right? And there are not, and these are not isolated failures. The history of government nutritional advice from the 1960s to the present is an appalling one. The advice of Experts was frequently wrong and sometimes brought and bought and paid for a special interest, but always delivered with an air of unchallengeable certainty. And we're seeing this. And like, a, like how many times? Just because someone can put forth a good sales tactic, a good narrative, right? Like I say, stake oil salesmen are they're they're good at what they do. That's probably the only thing that they're good at is presenting a false narrative, right? At selling a false narrative. But if you're foolish enough to fall into their trap, well. You should have to suffer the indignity, indignities and hardships for doing so. Um, I'll post a link to this video or to this uh, article in the video below so you can continue on reading. It's, yeah, it's, I guess there's a fair amount of it left. Probably a good six, seven paragraphs. So, like I always suggest, read through the whole thing. I try to keep my videos fairly short. That's why I try to tie it up fairly quick. But read through it and, and plus it puts the onus on you. Um, informing yourself instead of listening to something like me telling you how to think right i don't want to tell you i think i just want to or what to think but yeah that's the, how you think is just take information from many different sources ram that through your head and you'll be surprised at how well your brain will uh, calculate this stuff up and come up with a pretty good uh, equation after the fact it's canadian libertarian and i love liberty